I don't hate the 2003 Hulk movie per se. There are some interesting things going on, but a lot of it doesn't work. It's an ambitious movie dancing between psychological pseudo-thriller and sci-fi monster flick. And normally, I don't talk about themes because I usually can't see theme, even if it stripped naked and gave me a lap dance. But this movie, thematically, well, it sure is something. There's the sins of the father visited on the son. It flirts with the metaphor of the Hulk as domestic abuse and psychological disorder. Then you've got the generic government bad. But even in over two hours, the movie isn't able to juggle all of this. I won't say a movie has to pick one lane and stay in it. Look at the X-Men. It's not specifically about racism, but about persecution in general. That metaphor is broad enough that you can milk many kinds of stories out of it, and it doesn't feel like you're stretching. But persecution is still the general premise you're working with. But this movie tries to do four very different things, and it fails at all of them. It's the theme version of introducing three separate villains with three separate motivations. It's going to get crowded and confusing. This movie has a limited amount of time to try to do something interesting, and could have succeeded if it focused on doing one thing really well instead of four things really bad. And I'm not sure trying to balance the psychological stuff with bombastic action works. I'm all for characters with real problems they're working through. The first Iron Man movie, Tony's a little so-and-so, his actions backfire on him, then he spends the rest of his life trying to atone for those actions. The action scenes correlate to the theme of atonement. When Tony fights bad guys, it relates to his conflict. But this movie can't decide what the conflict is. You've got two outright bad guys and one not exactly bad antagonist. As I've suggested before, less is more. Get rid of Glenn Talbot. He wants to monetize the stuff Bruce and Betty are working on and later the Hulk process. But General Ross and Bruce's father are more interesting, so Talbot's out. You might say Talbot, being the most outright villainous of the three, is the cause of stress triggering two of Banner's Hulk outs. Without these Hulk outs, you'd have long, long stretches of the movie with no action. While Ang Lee was interested in the psychological elements of the story, it was marked as a sci-fi action film, so you should have some of that. If you remove Talbot, you'd have to make General Ross less morally gray, which would provide more parallels between Bruce's father and Betty's father, if you wanted to stick with the story the movie did. Both men clearly love their children, but are capable of trying to kill an innocent man for the greater good. Bruce's father is indirectly responsible for Bruce's condition, and he's the one fighting Bruce at the end. But outside of an 11 minute prologue, we barely see him in the first 40 minutes. That's when Bruce finds out Nick Nolte is the father. So if Nick Nolte's the main bad guy, that's 40 minutes of wasted real estate. And then there's a lot of space in the rest of the movie where you'd be forgiven for forgetting he even exists. Remove the 11 minute prologue since it's fighting a losing battle with itself, trying to establish plot stuff for later in the movie, while also trying to be mysterious about what happened in the 1960s so we can get a big reveal later on. We see Bruce's mom, played by Nancy's mom from Stranger Things, then Bruce is about to go to college. We see a woman, I assumed in my first viewing was Nancy's mom from Stranger Things, but older. She tells him, you're going to be a scientist, like your father. But later we find out Bruce was adopted, and later still we find out young Nick Nolte tried to kill Bruce because of what he might turn into, which itself didn't make sense as it was exposure to the gamma radiation later in life that allows Bruce to turn into anything, and Nick Nolte, in ended up accidentally killing Nancy's mom from Stranger Things. Nick Nolte goes to prison, Bruce is adopted, and how does Cam's mom from Modern Family know Bruce's dad was a scientist? Sam Elliott is myth Bruce is studying the same field of science his father was. If you're concerned, maybe you shouldn't have told Bruce's mom anything about his background. Maybe you should have kept an eye on Bruce from afar, like sinister Obi-Wan. I don't condone murder, but when he starts banging your daughter, maybe call in some favors. And if you think all of this was out of Ross's hands, he ranks high enough that he directly passes information to the president of the United States, so I think he could make some decisions that could have prevented some of this. Almost all the information we get in the prologue is given later in expository dialogue, so start with adult Bruce Banner. Yes, Banner. Skip the adoption thing, because people my parents' age, at the time this movie came out, know the Hulk as David Banner, and people who knew the comics knew him as Bruce Banner. When Sam Elliott calls him Bruce Kinsler, I'm wondering, is Ang Lee changing Bruce's name because that's what adaptations of the Hulk do? Logically, I thought this woman was this woman because the movie gave me no reason to think otherwise. Bruce and Betty aren't working on healing damaged tissue. It makes them sympathetic and likable, but a big thing about the Hulk is Bruce was building the ultimate weapon, and thanks to his hubris, he becomes the ultimate weapon. Removing that dulls the thematic edge of the war. Sam Elliott says Bruce was studying the same stuff Nick Nolte was, but Nolte was working for the government, while Bruce is opposed to interference from Glenn Talbot, who works for some corporation, but has enough government pool to go over Ross's head. Beyond the 
seems if Banner's working with the military, it gives a better plot reason for General Ross to be here. In real life, when a mishap happens in a not government related lab, the military doesn't investigate. Broken walls and ceilings would be a police matter. But if this is a military experiment, he's there and that makes sense. After Banner's accident, he gets in a shouting match with General Ross. He hulks out, maybe he injures Betty accidentally, nothing serious, but enough to get the military chasing Hulk. You would run the risk of turning this film into a chase thriller like The Incredible Hulk rather than a psychological thriller Ang Lee was interested in. So in Act 2, our focus would be on internal conversations between Banner and Hulk, which is something the comics did a little in the 1980s. The movie even did the meeting between Hulk and Banner in a dream. But you're doing a movie about a damaged individual's psychology. This should be a huge part of the narrative, not one tiny scene in a dream. You'd find out Bruce had an awful childhood. No sci-fi experiments, just a regular abusive dad. Maybe he wanted a kid who was more macho and was always yelling at Bruce for being such a nerd. That's really cliche, but in the comics they've played with the idea that everyone's Hulk Sona is kind of wish fulfillment. The leader wasn't that smart, but his gamma self was. Jen Walters was a little klutzy and mousy, but she Hulk sure ain't. Bruce Banner was puny, and the only place he ever excelled was mentally, and he was belittled for that. So Bruce is exposed to the gamma radiation, it changes him into what his dad always told him was worthwhile, a monosyllabic muscle-bound monstrosity. While Bruce the subconscious is listening to years of abuse, he's also ready to give as good as he used to get. Bruce might say, I don't want to kill anyone, but his subconscious says otherwise. If Bruce ever opened up to Betty about his emotional trauma, she might figure out Hulk is going to look for his dad to get revenge. This puts the military in the adversarial but not evil category. If the movie's done its job, we don't see Hulk as evil, but we should be able to see where General Ross and Betty are coming from. It's not Hulk's fault he's going through what he's going through. Lots of people manufacture arms and don't turn into radiation monsters, but he is still a threat. The military uses sci-fi super tech to slow down Hulk while they put Bruce's father in protective custody. Betty and General Ross can have angry conversations with Dad saying this is his fault. I don't want the dad to become a supervillain. Yes, the comics have done it, but in the psychological trauma story Ang Lee was interested in, turning Nick Nolte into the Absorbing Man or Zazax with no explanation how that works, that's a little silly. Before Mr. Banner sees the Hulk, he smarts off and says, oh, puny Bruce finally made something of himself, huh? But the army wasn't able to keep the Hulk away. When Hulk shows up, Mr. Banner turns into a screaming puddle of fear, flipping the dynamic between him and Bruce. This would make the father pretty one note compared to Nick Nolte's portrayal, but even though Nolte's character had some complexity, he was also extremely inconsistent. We find out at the end he tried to kill toddler Bruce because he was afraid of what he would become. This is tragic when he seems to love Bruce, but at the end, he says Bruce isn't his son, and he considers the Hulk his son. He's done a complete 180 from what set all of this in motion. So even though Nolte's portrayal is pretty pretty interesting, it is a mess narratively speaking. Here, I'd say the father is little more than an inciting incident for everything that happens, but he doesn't need to be a fully fleshed out character himself. We're more concerned with everyone else having to deal with his mess in the here and now. With daddy cowering in fear, Hulk, after coming all this way, going through the military sci-fi defenses, does nothing. Maybe there's a part of Bruce that still loves his dad, no matter how abusive he was. Or maybe he likes making his abuser feel small and insignificant, and killing him would be too easy. Or maybe he sees a pleading look in Betty's eyes, and a small part of him doesn't want her to hate him any more than she already does. Or maybe he sees General Ross and decides to be the better man, just to spite the guy who, in his way, was as much a crucible that turned Bruce into the Hulk as Banner's father. Hulk leaves, and you basically get the ending we got with Banner in South America trying to keep his cool. This may sound like it would make for a short movie, but during the race to find Brian Banner before the Hulk does, there's a lot you could do to pad the movie. Banner de-Hulks, figures out what caused his transformation, maybe he pops some pills to keep himself spaced out, some cops see him stealing from the pharmacy, he hulks out again. When he's in banner form, you could do the Willem Dafoe voice talking to him bit for more unsettling psychological horror. That's it for this one. This movie has a reputation of not being good, or people don't remember it at all. But honestly, if you tighten the focus just a little, I think it would have been maybe not a 21st century classic, but more fondly remembered than what it is. In any case, I hope you guys like this one. In the meantime, I'll be back in the future to talk about something else. And until then, have a good one.